President Trump in Brussels. You're looking at live pictures right now. He is walking in for the official handshake at the beginning of the NATO summit. Posing for pictures right alongside NATO Secretary General Jan Stoltenberg, a man with whom he had breakfast this morning and a man with whom he already exchanged fairly sharp words about the defense spending among NATO members and fairly sharp words about the president's charge that Germany is being held captive by Russia. This played out in front of the cameras for the whole world to see just a short time ago. Now the president has arrived at the beginning of the official meeting with the other NATO leaders and very shortly will be face to face with Angela Merkel and the other NATO leaders. We will watch and see how they interact as it happens. In the meantime, joining us to talk about this and more, retired General George Jolwin, former Supreme Allied Commander of NATO. General, thank you so much for being with us. You note that one of the most important things to stress at NATO meetings, and you've been to many of these, is unity. Do you feel that that is the tone the president has struck so far this morning? Not really. Uh, I believe it's important uh, what he's saying in terms of the 2% the contribution by, by the nations is important. We've been stressing that for, in my recollection, 20 to 30 years. And there are, they have made progress. But the more important part is the cohesion of the alliance. We fought two world wars in Europe in the last century, and we fought a 40-year Cold War against the Soviet Union. And the, the combined cohesion and alliance came together, and that is what brought about success. End of the Cold War, brought down the Iron Curtain, brought down the Berlin Wall. We must remember all that as we go forward, and that cohesion is needed today. And by the way, normally at these summits, the first speaker uh, that the Secretary General recognizes is usually the United States. He has to set the tone, and I hope he understands that. Uh, certainly understanding that we need to reach a 2 percent goal, but also in the way of harmony and cohesion going forward. What do you think the impact is, though, the ultimate effect of the words he chooses and the way he chooses to discuss this? We have heard much of this before, not maybe at the same tone, but the same desire to see increased uh, European involvement in their defense and their spending. But what the United States normally does, the president strikes a tone of unity, and I hope he does yeah. that. That's what I think is important here. They provide much more than just 2%. Yeah. We've had ba we have bases all throughout Europe to give us global reach in Germany, in Italy, in Spain, and elsewhere. Uh, they have contributed a great deal of their troops. Uh, to Afghanistan, Iraq, and Syria. They've bled on the battlefield with us. Mm -hmm. uh, that needs to be recognized as well as 2% of their, uh, of, their, of their GNP in the defense. And so I would hope he would recognize that as we go forward. Still insisting, and we all insisted on doing more with, the, with, mm -hmm. with their defense budgets, but don't, don't neglect the other role that they're contributing. Well, one of the things you said is that a normal president would go in and stress the unity. Well, President Trump supporters will tell you he's not a normal president. He likes to shatter some of the images of, of past administrations and past traditions here. And he browbeat Jan Stoltenberg into admitting that NATO nations are spending more in their own defense because of the president's rhetoric over the last two years on this subject. So the president's defenders will say, hey, it works. We're getting what we want here. So why are you complaining? Fine. Let him, let him really beat the drum on the 2%, but uh, also, and take credit for it, but also work on the other part mm -hmm. of the contribution they're making with us in the global war on terror, in what we're trying to create a better world. Again, Russia has tried what they're doing in Ukraine and Crimea. We've got the Balkans up there with Estonia, Latvia, mm -hmm. Lithuania also threatened. So, uh, I think what the what we are the leader in this uh, in this alliance, and I think our president needs to demonstrate that. Are we still the leader yes. in this alliance, based yes. on what the president's saying? Yes. Um, and you brought up Latvia and the Balkans, and, and you hear stories about these nations and the concern, the Baltic states, the concern from them about the U.S. commitment. They are right on the border with Russia. Russia is meddling in their elections, in their processes, their democratic processes. 
What do they see in those countries when the president speaks like this? What do they see when the president speaks in somewhat glowing terms about Vladimir Putin? Uh, they, they want a reaffirmation of Article 5 of the treaty, which is an attack upon one and an attack upon all. That's what they want. And by the way, NATO has deployed aircraft t to that region mm -hmm. uh, in, their, in, the, in, in their defense. We have uh, international troops that are in that region from other nations as well. So uh, we, NATO is taking steps uh, ahead of time to deter. Mm -hmm. And by the way, it's better to deter a war than fight one. And that's what NATO has been about uh, for since 1949. Russia, you look at Vladimir Putin, is he a friend, a foe, or just a competitor, as the president says? Right, right now, I, I would see him as uh, uh, a foe. But remember, <clears throat> I was able to get a Russian brigade to join with NATO to go into Bosnia. They were very effective, very helpful. Uh, I made several trips uh, saying the, the effectiveness of Russia joining us in the Partnership for Peace to be able to stop the ethnic cleansing that was going on in Bosnia, and we did. And so uh, where we have common interest, we need to talk, we need to open the door with Russia, and not in the way of whatever oil they're given to, to Germany, but in the way to create better relations, to, to have some, some mutual trust and confidence as we go forward. Russia can play a key part in that. General Jalwin, always a pleasure to have you with us. Thanks so much for helping us understand these issues that are playing out before our eyes this morning. Do appreciate it. Thank you.